Hey guys, this is James White with Frequent Reviews bringing you my top 10 worst products that I reviewed in 2018. Two quick disclaimers. Number one, the only criteria I used for choosing these was that I reviewed them during the calendar year and also I have no affiliation with the companies that produce these products, but if you want to buy them yourselves, I got links in the description below. Without further delay, let's get right to my top 10 worst of 2018. These are the Bell & Howell disc lights, which that one's no longer working. The one that was here stopped working months ago. These made my list because they're pathetically dim. They failed to live up to the advertising and they didn't really last that long. Here's some clips from my original disc lights review. I'm not overly impressed with the brightness right now. There's my cheap Kmart light and back there is the disc light, which from back here doesn't look as bright as the cheap Kmart light. I'm not overwhelmed by their brightness. My cheap Kmart lights are still on. Disc lights aren't. Now this might look bright on camera, but watch this. This is the atomic beam tap light with some of Bailey's hair on it. Now I know it's different because this is battery powered. It's not supposed to really be accent lighting, but look at the difference in brightness. They pale in comparison. This is an egglet. To use this item, you crack open an egg, put it in there, you boil it, and then you have a hard boiled egg without the shell. This is one of those items, I think it works, but is it really necessary? I don't think so. Now my best of list had another item that made hard boiled eggs, the perfect egg maker. I thought that one kind of changed the process and made it easier for those who might have problems making hard boiled eggs. This one doesn't really change the process. It doesn't really make it easier. And in some cases it might make it more difficult. So even though I think it works, I don't think it's necessary, but here's some clips from my original egglets review. Well, it's not really popping out. That's weird. The one with oil seems worse than the one that had nothing. So you're really going to have to just play with, I guess, the times on here because I'm getting medium where I should have got soft and I'm getting hard where I should have had medium. I'm just disappointed they're not popping out like they had that cute sound in the commercial. I'm not getting the sound. I'm having to like scrape this with a spoon. I really can't account for the difference because I measured out how much oil went each one and I rolled them around instead of using my finger and it seems like I'm getting different results each time. Oh, it came out. So once I realized to get rid of their instructions and cut them the way I wanted to, the deviled eggs came out fine. The other question is, is this better than putting eggs in a pot and boiling them? I'm not sure about that. This is a regular computer mouse and this is the pocket mouse, the as seen on TV pin shaped mouse. That the idea of it sounds great until you try to use it. It's a little bit awkward, kind of clunky. The buttons are in weird places. Lefties have even more of a problem because there's a button here you have to somehow get to. The idea of a pocket mouse is a lot better than the reality. I let my kids try it. They didn't like it. To me, this is just not something that is very useful. But here's some scenes from my original pocket mouse review. And part of the reason it's hard to review is because it does work almost exactly as advertised, but I'm still having a hard time liking it. You're on your pocket mouse. You're doing something. You need to use your keyboard. Put it down. Type. Pick it back up. Now you got to kind of fumble to get it back in the right position as opposed to a mouse where it's like this type. When I use the pocket mouse, my pinky is dragging across the table. If you're going to use this as a left hander, you're kind of in trouble because where are you, how are you going to right click that? There's your button. It looks like it's no better than using just a regular mouse, which isn't really great for doing artwork anyways, but it just hasn't caught on. Maybe because people like a regular mouse better than a pen shaped mouse. This is Arctic Air. It was heavily advertised earlier this year. Got a lot of attention as a personal space cooler. All you do is add water and it blows cool air at you. Now here's the thing. It, I found that it kind of worked, but th there was two problems with it. Number one, the fan really isn't that strong. So when it was up against a fan of comparable size that just blew regular air, it didn't seem much different. And number two, People that live in humid climates don't really get much of a benefit because evaporative cooling doesn't really work in high humidity. So even though I think it does work, I just don't think it really lives up to the advertising hype at all. In fact, I think that a cheap fan performs almost as well. Here's some scenes from my Arctic Air review. Now it's windy out here. I don't even feel that. What's that, Bailey? What is that? Oh, Bailey likes that. She has to inspect it again. All right, it's time for some emo hair here. Let's see which fan is stronger with the hair test. The Walmart fan is stronger, but the Arctic Air is cooler. This one, you really can't adjust vertically. With the stronger fan over here, it doesn't feel like a huge difference. This is definitely cooler, 
but this being stronger offsets it a little bit. You really have to be right on top of it, especially outside if you want to feel any cool air from the Arctic air. This is a Fixate gel pad. These are advertised heavily on social media as kind of a wonder item that can stick anything anywhere. Well, to me, it wasn't so much of a wonder. I wondered why they advertise it so much because it didn't really work so well for me. Check out some scenes from my Fixate gel pads review. I think they had it like this. Perfect. Of course, now that my hands are here, it's working or not. Hey, it worked. Mmm. Now, how long will it stay? Let's try that out. But they seem pretty firmly on there. I'm leaving for about an hour and I get back. They better be there. And there it is. Where are they? They're right there. Hopefully, they're still up when I get back. It has been about two minutes and it just fell. There it is, it fell also. If it were me, I wouldn't trust an expensive device on these unless I'm sure it's not gonna fall. This is Tiger Wrench, which is advertised as kind of a versatile tool. The problem is the Tiger Wrench that I bought looked a little bit different than the one they showed in the advertising. The sockets in the commercial are a lot deeper than the ones that I purchased and that caused problems, making this, in my opinion, kind of useless. Here's some scenes from my Tiger Wrench review. They're saying, I think the commercial says you can go up to 45 degrees and it's, that's definitely a kind of, a, it's gonna pop, it pops off of there whenever you try to go with that kind of angle. You really have to kind of keep it more parallel. By comparison, you have a regular socket. You don't have any interference down there. Right here, see that? It's, it's actually in the way. It's hitting right there. Whereas you have this, not hitting. Hey, let's try doing some spark plugs, all right? Oh wait, it's 13 sixteenths, we can't do that. This is def definitely different than the one they're showing in the commercial. This is the Ice Genie, which is kind of advertised as a next-gen ice cube maker. They say you can replace 10 ice cube trays with this. I was suspicious, so I gave it a shot, tested it out. My suspicions were confirmed when this didn't hold a candle to regular ice cube trays as far as volume of ice created. Maybe a number of ice cubes, which were that small. Check out my original ice genie review. Now we're supposed to pour water in here. I'm going to use filtered water. That didn't seem like a lot of water. Not just snapping on real easily. I'm squeezing pretty hard. Ugh. I have ice flying everywhere. All right, uh, that's not really a lot of ice. Do you have like a big one of these? You don't want that. Three ice genie batches, three ice cube tray batches. Here's the ice cube size. 10 ounces per ice cube tray versus six ounces for the ice genie. And you can do multiple ice cube trays at once. This you can only do one at a time. But when you're only getting six ounces at a time and you have to struggle to put the lid on, I don't know, kind of defeats the purpose. All right, next up is Measure King, which is a three-in-one digital tape measure. Now, when I first reviewed it, I thought this is kind of a cool idea, even though the laser isn't accurate 100% of the time, or even give a reading at all sometimes, but I eventually realized a tape measure should be accurate 100% of the time. And the more I used it, the less I liked it. So to me, the Measure King is a royal pain. Here's some scenes from my original Measure King review. Error. It says 40 and three quarters. 40 and three quarters. I'm not showing 40 and three quarters. I'm showing 40 and one quarter. Well, we seem to be having a little discrepancy in the measurements, so we gotta keep measuring and see what's going on with that. Right on the 24, and shine it right over there. 180, 194 inches, that is not correct. Let's try this one more time, 24 inches. not 27 and a half inches. I've got it right above the tape measure. It's falling along that line. It, uh, it's just not right. That's not 24 inches. Now with laser mode, not so easy to write those off. I have had a hard time getting them to be accurate compared to a tape measure by sometimes an inch or more. <laughs> 
This is the Hurricane Spin Duster. It's advertised to make dusting fun and easy. Well, it might be fun, it might be easy, but there really isn't a lot of dusting going on because I found that this kind of kicks the dust up around more than really picks it up. In fact, after my review, the only way I was really able to get this to pick up dust was to spray it with Pledge first, which kind of defeats the purpose. I actually found a dollar store dusting glove that worked better in my opinion. Here's some scenes from my original Hurricane Spin Duster review. Am I just moving it around? I can't tell. It's basically moving all the dust here and stopping. So actually, it's not picking the dust up, it's moving the dust. Oh, oh, it's kicking the dust out. Boom, 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 what, what do we got here? This is not picking it up, it's moving it around. It's supposed to pick up the dust, but I mean, I don't see any dust in here at all. Oh no, oh, come on. Dust is going everywhere. Oh, oh. Oh, it's just down on our back legs. It is dusted, but I saw dust flying that way when I was doing it. Picking it up, unlike the Hurricane Spin Duster, I kind of like the glove, and it was one buck. The dust does not cling to this brush, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of it. This is Cop Cam and my choice for the worst product of 2018. This is my fifth time recording this intro because the first four times, either it didn't work, or cut off. This thing is just a complete mess. The color black often appears purple. The night vision is so bad you can't even tell who I am. If I approached your security cam looking like this, you wouldn't be able to recognize me. The video format isn't readable by Windows default video player. It doesn't stay on more than about a half an hour. It's supposed to be a security cam lasting all day. Just all kinds of problems. Here's some scenes from my original cop cam review. There's no way to preview what you're seeing, so you have to kind of just guess. Oh, and the uh, SD card just came out. The charging process is a little bit confusing. When it's in your computer, you get an alternating green and red light. When it's charging in the wall, you get a flashing light. When you're charging your laptop, the light goes out. When you charge it on your, in the wall, the light stays on. All right, so the cop cam stopped working after about 30 seconds while Bailey was still walking around on the patio. But again, I only got about 30 minutes out of 10 hours, which makes me wonder how effective this would be as a security camera. How does all the colors look? Because my camera's usually pretty accurate. Let me turn this around and show the yard, show some outdoor footage. All right, how does that look? I'm panning right now, I'm panning across the yard. How does Bailey look? Does she look the right color? Does she look golden? All right, the last feature I want to try out is the infrared night vision. I'm only a few feet from the camera right now. Do I look pink like I expect to look? That could be the, one of the reasons why I'm getting a pink hue in some of my daytime shots. Maybe the infrared's kicking in then as well. So to me, this feels kind of like a prototype that was never completely finished. So there you have it. That's my top 10 worst of 2018. But there's a few items that still belong in this video that didn't make the list. Here are my three choices for honorable mention. All right, here is the tack visor. Actually, I don't have it because my tack visor broke. And not only did it break, but someone thought it was a bunch of mangled plastic and threw it away. So my tack visor is gone. I wasn't really impressed with Tac Visor to begin with. First of all, there was a reflection that really kind of was a distraction. And also, as it got warm, it started bowing like that. It warped. And what happened was I closed my visor and it snapped in pieces. So here's actually a clip of what I posted on my Instagram of when it was warping. I don't know if it's the extreme heat from Vegas here, but the Tac Visor is starting to bow if you see that. Look at that. If you get the Tac Visor in a really hot climate, this could happen to you. So as you can see, I wasn't really that impressed with Tech Visor, but here's some scenes from my original Tech Visor review. So that's how it works. You pull down once for the daytime panel, push that back up if you want to get the night panel down here. In both cases, I'm finding a little bit of a problem with fingerprints. So that's behind the car, this reflection right here. So if you're short and want to use this, you really can't even rotate it down with the visor. It just kind of rotates it like that. It doesn't make it any lower. But if you're short, you may not get the full benefit of the tack visor. I really can't open the mirror unless I take the tack visor off. This is a visor. They're trying to make it some sort of a military type thing. I don't know about that. You might get it peeking between that little gap right there. So there's a couple other things to consider as well. Next up on my list is not a product, but it is a website and that is wish.com. And I did two different videos where I bought items from Wish.com advertised as genuine as seen on TV products. But the funny thing is I had the original as seen on TV products and when I compared the two, didn't really seem like the same thing. 
I felt like most of what I got from Wish were counterfeits. And again, I purchased from vendors who were advertising the name of the ASEAN TV product, the photo of the original ASEAN TV product, and what I got did not look like the originals. Here's some scenes from both of my Wish versus ASEAN TV comparisons. It looks similar. The Wish one feels a little bit thinner and maybe a little bit cheaper. The real Dust Daddy with the Wish Dust Daddy. Now when I ordered the Wish Dust Daddy, I think it was about three bucks. It said Dust Daddy on it. It actually had a picture of Dust Daddy. And as you can tell, they are not the same thing. <laughs> Look at this. This is supposed to be the Hurricane Fur Wizard. Let me show you what the real one looks like. This is the Hurricane Fur Wizard. And it has this base that removes the hair from it. This is the one I just got from Wish. It's, it's puny and it doesn't have a base. There's a rubber piece on the end of the original, not on the Wish. The original seems to have more of a crease in the center. The Wish does not. This is the original. The bridge looks a little bit different for the nose as well. No Bell and Howell label on the back. Bell and Howell official, no Bell and Howell there. Hmm. There's an extra hole for a hook here. This doesn't exist in the Bell and Howell. So definitely not the exact same product. When you look at the original Comfort Click belts here, you have these markings, right? The one from Wish has no markings. It's not smooth whatsoever. This is a piece of junk. We're gonna have Wish on the left, and we're gonna have the perfect smile veneers on the right. Wish on the left, original on the right. Next on the list, clever tongs. These are supposed to be the tongs that have the scoop built into them. But I found that even though they kind of worked okay as regular tongs, the scoop portion had problems right from the start. The small one half the time sticks and stays closed like that. Although they work as tongs, the clever part is not so clever. Here's some clips from that review. It's a little bit too small. If it's wider than these tongs, it might be a problem to flip. I think it performed okay. I'm not sure it outperformed a spatula. Huh. I can't really push it against the edge because the tong portion is kind of in the way, if you see that. See, that front section where it hits against the edge is becoming a problem. Here's the problem with the edges again. But look, you already have tongs, you already have a spatula, you already have a spoon. I don't really see what this brings to the table. In fact, that gap becomes more of a problem than anything. So I'm not sure Clever Tongs is really ready for prime time. So there you have it. Those are my picks for the worst products of 2018. What do you think about this list? Let me hear from you in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this as we head into 2019. Until next time, this is James White with Frequent Reviews. Thank you. Mm -hmm.